the raven. Okay, the, ra so the raven, ladies. The ravens can recognize a face versus a mask. I've oh, seen, right. um, which is amazing to me. So they they know if it's a person and they get to recognize it. And if they don't like you, <laughs> it can be it can be a challenge. But wow. I'm amazed that they they can tell the difference between a mask and a and a human face. Well, thank you for that share. Um, this is the, my raven skeleton. You can see the head. It's got a flat head. The raven adult has a big bill, a big beak. Right? And here's where the attachment of the neck muscles go. Underneath here, the chin, they have uh, feathers that are um, ruffled looking. And so the sh they call them shaggy hairs. You might see the shaggy hairs behind their head as well. And over here on the top of their beak, the hair grows this way and it covers so the beak holes. Okay. Um, you can see on this, this skeleton right here, there's this indentation. That's where the, the hole for the ear is. They, they don't have ear flaps like we do, but um, their feathers cover it. So um, here's my painting of the juvenile raven. It's a male juvenile, although females are probably similar. The markings, the head shape of the juvenile is a little bit flatter and rounder than the grown up. Um, and this is more similar to uh, the crow. When he grows up, this will be more squared off. Okay, And they are a stocky looking. Um, so make sure you give them a good size neck. All right. So I'm, I've got my rice paper here and I'm using a mini flow brush because it's uh, just a small little sketch I'm doing for you and then a detail brush. Okay. I need it. So even though it's uh, just for demo, I'm going to um, do the shapes to make sure that everything fits on the paper. And I might center this uh, for your composition. Do not center. This is just for demonstration purposes only, right? We want to have a beautiful asymmetrical composition. So the head is um, doing it a little bit more egg shape, and I'm trying to get that in there. And I'll get the back of the neck and come underneath this part here for the throat. Okay. All right. I'm going to load my brush with um, ink. I'm getting like a medium dark ink on my bigger brush. And I'm going to put very dark ink for my um, my detail brush. And if you like, you can actually take the, the black from your uh, companion set or any other color set too and mix it in and get a nice color black there. A little hint for you. Very contemporary we're doing it. All right, so here we go. I'm going to use um, just a round shape here. Find where I would want that beak coming a little bit above. Put the pupil there and encircle it. You know, the juvenile's a little bit more wide-eyed, right? So that's what I'm going to do, create that. I'm going to leave it to, the, to later on and put the colored iris, which happens to be um, a light blue. Come out from that eye a little bit and we'll look at our model again. Here we can see there's the eye socket and it's really close to the beak. So I'm just kind of come out a little bit here 
and paint that beak. And even though it rained yesterday, it's still pretty dry. And I'm also using um, a not too absorbent rice paper for my demo that slows my strokes down. I'm gonna do the top part of the beak there and then the bottom here. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to my bigger brush which I've loaded with ink. And I'm going to get those feather tracks that we talked about. One of them is for the ear, which is that hole there. It's a little bit behind the eye. Like that. Right over the top of it is a triangular area. Here's my model right there. I'm gonna go right over that and do a triangle with my side brush rather than up and down sideways. Press and down. I'm gonna go up above the eye, come into the beak and add some of those feathers that are on the top of the beak. Here's my model, little feathers there. And we thank Steve, Evelyn and Carol and Chow for helping us purchase our models. Okay. Come out with a straight line then press down. Get that flat head, come back around the eye, and then create that triangle. If you want to show some feathers now, that would be a good choice. And come back into where the throat is. And another triangle is here. And if I want to have this wispy look, this little dry look, I need to take a little bit of cover, color off of my brush. Here's my brush. It's wet here, right? So I'm gonna dry that up a bit and then take some of the color off too. And let's save enough to make sure that it cover the body. Okay, press. There we go. And lift to create some wisps here. And again, the neck, a few triangular strokes again. So one, tri one little um, rectangle here and a triangle. And another triangle behind. And I want to leave some space there so that we can um, create highlights. Even though this bird is a black bird, it's not a solid mass, it's not a silhouette, right? So light hits the bird and the feathers. The feathers are not all lined up like little soldiers. Some some feathers are sticking out, some are going to the left, some are going to the right. Um, some might have been worn down or broken. So that's how you do it. Okay. In here. And more upright brush to get those feathery strokes because I want more of the tip to be using to create these little feathers here. And if you like, you can put a little bit more here on the top of the raven, like that. Remember, I, I said that this is a, a teenager, so if you wanted to create an adult rather than a teenager, you'd have to flatten this off there, like that. Looks kind of eagle-like, doesn't it? 
you know, I've created this part. I can come back in and make the little hairs here for definition on the eye. Clean my brush off and dry it off a little bit. Now I must have some lighter ink. And I can use that to come in to the beak and take a fine line brush, dip that into light blue. And just circle the eye, my light blue. Leave a little space there. That'll get a highlight. If I want to make him fierce looking, I could have um, hooded this. That means I um, put a line there, and that gives you that angry bird look. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for watching. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for that share. All right. So now we have the head and <clears throat> the, the chest of the raven. And we're going to continue. Um, that's a juvenile raven. This is a crow. And um, this is the body. And it's very similar to the, um, the juvenile raven. It's, you can see, though, how the uh, neck hairs are smoother. But this part of the trunk and the wings when they're um, close to the body like that, when it's not flying, looks very similar. Okay. And you can see all these highlights. I'm going to try to save some of these highlights. Right. Now, if I wanted to, I could just take my painting like that and put it match it up like that and put it down. I could have some reference there, but um, don't need to do that. But you know, if that's what you would like to do, that's not cheating. Okay. And this shape, we're going to bring this down a little bit. So I'm using my fingernail to help me sketch out the shape that I want and to make sure that I have enough room on my screen here, on my uh, paper, get everything in. Okay, it's gonna be close. <laughs> I'm gonna wet my brush, gonna dry my brush and I'm going to get some medium dark ink and I'm going to remember my references where the feathers are, the wing, right? So right here is the belly, but everything else is wing. So we have several layers of secondary coverts and I'm gonna start painting them in. I'm gonna dry off my heel a little bit and my brush is not fully pointed and that's what I wanted to do. Okay. And they line up. So I'm gonna curve them. There's one row of coverts. It's a little rounded here. Then underneath would be another row. And a third row. And these tips would show more. Now my paper is not very absorbent and your paper will um, be more bleedy, right? So you won't get these um, dry, this dry look unless you use a brush with not very much water, okay. So those are those coverts right here, okay. There's another layer where you can see longer feathers. 
and I'm going to come up more on the tip of my brush and hold my brush a little bit more straight up and down and paint in some of those feathers. back here, get a little bit of the belly. And right there is the, these primary feathers and then um, right there and the secondary feathers there, okay? So we have no um, tail yet. So come in. Primary feathers. Make that a little bit more wispy, more feathery looking instead of a line. And then come back in and from out to in, you can do these secondary ones. And in my drawing, here's the, here's the uh, heel of the feet that comes out below the feathers. Here's my model there. Maybe you can see it better with my lighter skeleton model. There, right here is where you'll see it come out. All right, and I'm gonna create some of these shaggy feathers hanging down. Just like that. A little bit. A little egg circle here, a little oval for the egg, and cross from the neck down. Here's where the foot would come out. There. There's one foot. And we're going to put it into the, um, the foliage so you won't see the toes. I'll create that. Okay. So um, we're down here with the foot. And you see here, you just see the, the feathers on the foot. Okay, in another video, I'll just show you how to finish that foot off. So this one, I'd say would be the back foot. And we just create a little bit there for the right, the other foot. Okay. And then this is a little rounded here. And create some more feathers. To get rid of some of that roundness. Elongate that primary feather there. And maybe add a little bit of darkness to the top of my bird. to unite the body with the head. Okay. And come in and do a little bit more on the beak. Okay. And there's my bird. Thank you.